Hello, my soccer universe. It is not with tons of joy, but to be honest, with silent admiration that I am talking about this. Yeah, I would have liked to wear this shirt up there. Maybe this one here. It is by Munich. And to be honest, I got this shirt shortly after Bayern really had this uh, sensation of showing on st at Stanford Bridge that I decided, yeah, Bayern might do something this year and I better get a Bayern jersey to be able to cover this uh, properly. So yeah, here it is. Uh, David Alaba on back. Bayern completed the perfect season. Uh, this is admiration mostly, uh, but also a little bit sad because Milan should have had completed the perfect season, but no, they lost the final against Marseille in 93 in Munich. Uh, one of those final losses that even all these years later, this one still hurts. I don't know which, which one actually hurt, hurts more, 93 or 2005. 2005 you had it, in 93, uh, yeah, this was kind of the swan song of the great Milan team. So, yeah. But let's talk about that game, because, um, to be honest, in a way, it lived up, especially in the first half, but I did not expect this to be a one-goal game. I told you in my preview, I expect Bayern to win by a lot or PSG uh, winning by a slim margin. And neither one came true. I expected goals, uh, but after the Europa League final, I almost had a little bit of feeling, yeah, the Europa League final completely surprised me. We might get surprised too. And I... In a way, uh, much in the run-up was, yeah, the coach that will flinch first and change the tactics will, uh, this will be the losing side. I have to say both coaches tinkered um, a little bit. Uh, maybe not with the lineup for PSG because it was the same lineup as in the semi-final, the goalie aside, which I was happy to see Kayla Navas back, although, I mean, Sergio, I Navas made one really good save uh, that he needed to make and it was reliable, um, that was that. Um, I was completely outclassed by the other goalie uh, on the field, uh, but uh, he was not the reason. Um, but yeah, PSG lined up the same way, but clearly demanded, especially, uh, especially from the strikers and um, Mbappé and Di Maria to work Back a little bit to keep the um, speed, especially of Davis. I mean, the two speeders, uh, Alfonso Davis and Mbappe, often found each other and they kind of kept themselves in check. Bayern, on the other hand, uh, decided on Kingsley Coma instead of Perisic. Um, official reason giving, yeah, it should give him some more motivation to play against his former, 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 former club. But it's also um, meant that Bayern was maybe not as pressing high. So, uh, as I said, from the get-go was not, uh, both had a slight changes in there to kind of pay respect to the other team. Um, and from the get-go, I have to say, the first 10 minutes, it was all uh, Bayern. And I, 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 I remember thinking, yeah, this is where PSG will have to work on because they are not often facing teams where, are, where they are not the favorites where they're actually the outsiders. And uh, you could see that, that they really needed to find their footing a, a little bit and they were pressured in without Bayern actually creating chances. Uh, also has tests, has but I think the first 10 minutes I thought, oh, here PSG is in for the, uh, the long run, uh, for a long evening here. On the other side, defensively, they looked quite sound. I really liked, uh, you know, Kera played great, Silva, of course, Kim Pembe, they all played great, the midfield slightly worked themselves into it and once it got working uh, around the 10th mini 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 mark, mark so it really worked well and right at that moment I mean I think it was in the 10th or 11th minute when suddenly Mbappé is uh, clear on the left he take he runs takes a shot that's blocked by Kimmich uh, and that was kind of a signal for PSG yes we can do something here uh, but it remained that way that uh, Bayern had maybe more possession but PSG seemed to be more dangerous and um, the next chance, also Mbappé plays to uh, Neymar, 
And that was the big one. Uh, Neymar running uh, again over this, and Neymar suddenly clear ahead of Neuer, takes a good shot, and Neuer somehow saves this. I mean, I think it went through his, his legs, but with the calf, he kind of then he could uh, parry it. Neymar tried to again play something, and Neuer again saved it. This was kind of, for me, or almost already the scene of the evening. Neuer being uh, impossible to break. Uh, he stood tall and denied Neymar the big chance at glory. They were not yet denied, but um, Bayern kind of needed to also get into that game and got their chance when the ball fell to Lewandowski in the box and he a uh, quick turnaround a la Gerd Müller. Uh, it doesn't hit it fully, but it's still the intention that it hits the post. So at that point, everyone said, yeah, okay, now the match is even, the match is going. It was a really enthralling match at that point, because both teams, I think, played relatively well, but largely also neutralized each other and had a lot of respect for each other at that point. Uh, 24th minute, Di Maria gets the ball, plays it to Herrera, who get, gives it back to Di, Di, Di Maria, who is now in a great shooting position. And puts it over, over the bar. I really saw when I saw Mar Di, Di, Di Maria show, show, show up there, I really thought, oh yeah, he's gonna make it. No, it went over, and in the same action, actually, Boateng uh, injured himself, and he was a little bit of a risk. Niklas Süle came, kicked him on, and I think if they had only three substitutions, I'm not sure if Hansi Flick would have uh, gone for Boateng, but this way, yeah, uh, he said, okay, we have five sub substitutions, we can do that. He actually only used uh, four in the final, as did uh, Thomas Tuchel, so uh, kind of interesting there as well. So that I actually thought for a uh, moment that we went with Boateng coming off, I'm not sure how what I should think about Sule. I think he Having a mate to buy it, he clears a great, great player. But this man mountain, he he looks a little bit uh, awkward sometimes. But yeah, people do rate him highly. And if you play at Bayern, you clearly are not a, a dummy. That also has, has, has to be said. But I thought this might be now a quick, a brief advantage for Bayern, uh, for PSG, because Bayern will not be as secure. And there was another one, I think it was after corner, 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 corner kick, where suddenly the ball comes to Herrera, who takes a nice drop kick that is blocked off, uh, I think it went off the head, at the back of Mbappé. And I slowly started to feel, yes, PSG is having chances, but what did we say, Lyon against Bayern? If you play, if you're the underdog, you need to take a chance. And I think that Herrera shot, if it would not have been blocked, that would have gone in. I'm absolutely certain this would have gone, gone in. Uh, it kept going in quick succession, this time on, on the other side. It didn't look like much, but suddenly uh, Lewandowski had, has a header from very close range that... Um, uh, Kayla Navas saves on the line um, and then uh, PSG again has no trouble actually containing the rebound which uh, showed me yeah defensively PSG is also working super well Thiago Silva probably playing his last uh, game for PSG seemed a little bit seems a little bit sad because he actually really plays a good season so I, I don't know I think there there will be we'll talk about later there will be a little bit of change coming at PSG probably also at Bayern but we'll see about that but yeah the midfield kind of it was really interesting how how things were going midfield because all the possession that um, Bayern had was kind of always thwart, thwarted and um, PSG could go forward and just when I thought yeah the game is now kind of safe-ish um, Heading for nil-nil at the half, Alaba plays a horrible pass across goal. That falls to Mbappé, who gives it again to Herrera, who then returns it to Mbappé, who has is absolutely free. The ball was maybe played just a tad too much bad because you can see in the slow-mo that Mbappé is not in the best position to make a good shot. And he made a horrible shot. This is the type of chance that you absolutely must convert. And I have to, I have, I have to say, uh, Mbappé seemed not to be on the top of his game in this game. Uh, Neymar a little bit more, but will come to him. Uh, especially the first person, I thought Neymar played good. Di, Di Maria was always the, 
uh, you know, when there was some creative attack was always going uh, over Di Maria. Mbappé tried, but Mbappé seemed to be not right there. And then uh, the last one was in stoppage time when uh, Kera kind of lays his arm on Coman. And Coman goes down in the box. And yeah, penalty or not, uh, they didn't even really look at it. Honestly, uh, it, it is a judgment call from the ref, uh, Orsato, who, yeah, we have to come to the refs a little, a little bit late, late again. Um, it is a judgment call. I can see if someone says this is a penalty. I personally probably would not have given it, but have, have in mind, I was definitely for PSG in that final. So it ends somewhat surprising in nil-nil. I think... Uh, one nil for PSG, uh, one one will probably be more representative of the game that we saw at that time. Uh, but I thought it was a really good game, a really open game, um, with two teams playing rather well. Um, the second half started out totally, uh, it was very uh, distraught in a way. Bayern clearly ramped up the physicality, and they said already in halftime, maybe you had already uh, Kimmich. Uh, on uh, no Davis on a yellow card, Kimmich kind of uh, walking a tight tightrope, also about to get get a yellow. So everyone said you gotta be careful because PSG is really dangerous and hold a little bit back. By the way, in the Sky Studios in Germany, uh, the experts were Lothar Matthäus, who is always there, Mark von Bommer, which I found already interesting, but that is fair. That he is at least um, like an expert. You know, he's he is he he he's his former pro player. But then Boris Becker, that didn't make much sense to me. Although I have to say, when he said some something, it was not all that off. But um, why do we have Boris Becker there? I know he's a Bayern fan. Uh, that, that that seemed a little bit crazy. Anyway, second half, Bayern ramped up the physicality and really tested Neymar. Uh, there were a few fouls on him and again Neymar not rolling a lot but you could see he was hurting uh, and when he fell you know the, he was he was acting <laughs> a little bit with with the falling but at least he was not acting or rolling on the floor but there were a few rather nasty challenges on him uh, one that got Serge Gnabry a uh, yellow, yellow card and we, you know, they embraced afterwards. So, you know, the respect for what was there, but it was clearly kind of knocked Neymar off his game. Uh, seemed to be the way to go. And I think in a way it did. Because at that point, Neymar lost himself a little, little bit and trying to do it all by himself. And I had the feeling this could go now two ways. Either Bayern is not getting uh, ranking up a little raking up a little bit yellow cards, losing it a little bit and PSG will hit them uh, with that. Maybe they go a man down or it will really get the message to PSG. Uh, yeah, hold back a little bit. It was the latter, it turned out to be. And there were not really big chances, but then at one point, uh, Gnabry plays a ball through Müller. Uh, that seemed to be saved at the moment. I mean, it bounced back, but uh, you can see in the replay that Müller actually played it out to Kimmich. And at that point, all the PSG defenders kind of rush towards, uh, rush a little bit outside, but give Kimmich enough time to uh, make a really nice cross in that hits Coman on the head, who puts it across the goal into the far corner past um, Navas. Coman, the PSG graduate. That must have hurt a little bit. And that shocked PSG, clearly. Not only were they now more physically now, uh, were they more physically now, they were also a goal up. And that really shocked PSG. Uh, and they needed a good 10 minutes to collect themselves in a period where Bayern could have made it to uh, goals easily. Uh, they were two or three chances. Right after, after goal, I thought, oh, now they are shaky. Um, they were not. Uh, it then took to the, uh, you know, but it took until the, um, what do I have here, 70, 70th minute. The 7th, 7th, 71st minute in Minuel Coutinho came on. We'll talk a little bit more about him. Uh, this was the time when the Neapere, yeah, Coman had a few chances, exactly. Coman had uh, another chance um, where I thought, yeah, he should, he should have made it. That was uh, cleared uh, by Thiago Silva. 
and then he came off. That I didn't understand because then Perisic comes on and Coutinho came on. Yeah, changed a little bit the game right there. But uh, Di Maria gets a really nice chance. Uh, ball. He has the ball on, on, on the other, turns around, plays it through the legs of Alaba. Did not have a great, uh, the greatest of games, I have to say. Although he is one of the leaders, he's definitely the leader of defense uh, for Bayern. Uh, plays the through, ball through to Alaba. Goes to Marquinhos and again, uh, Naya stonewalled it. You cannot get past Naya. This was your big chance to get an e e equalizer and give that game a slightly different spin. Yeah, what can I say? Then I think the last big scene for PSG um, when uh, Mbappé was in the box, he tried to dribble around and then gets hit on the backside of his heel by Joshua Kimmich in the box. Orosato sees it and waves it off. And why VAR did not intervene there, I don't know. Of all, there were three contentious penalty decisions. This was the clearest one. I have to say, uh, there, this was a 100% penalty and I don't know why VAR did not intervene there. This was not a judgment call anymore. This was a clearly missed ball. Um, but yeah, this was to me kind of the point where the game broke because this is then when PSG uh, really got, they were complaining already a bit, a bit about Faust and you missed the penalty and PSG lost itself. Um, there was another thing where I thought uh, they lost themselves even uh, in shortly thereafter. It was not only that Paredes came off or in a 65 65th for Verratti, which... Um, Kind of broke the midfield a little bit, but Verratti is a hard work working midfielder. I didn't think that, that, that this was too much of a problem, but uh, Ander Herrera came off for Julian Draxler and then later on Di Maria. And I think with Di Maria, uh, all the the creativity was a little, a little bit lost because uh, uh, who came on? Chupo uh, Moting for him. So I'm not sure if that was the really the smartest decision. Yes, Di Maria was a little bit ineffective but I think he was I actually would have understood more if Mbappé comes off to be honest because Mbappé was a disappointment and Neymar also kind of lost himself completely in the second half he had one glory moment in in a way in stoppage time when uh, he got free on the, on, on, on the left it was a difficult angle but he plays a pass across the Chupa Moutin cannot convert <sighs> that was it Bayern played it was more defensive but played it very well from that point on. I really felt that after this not after this missed penalty call that Bayern were rather in control and PSG did not come. And I have to say that all the exchanges by Thomas Tuchel, he did a great job getting this team together. But I have to have, have to say um, the substitutions <sighs> seemed uninspired and a little bit... Um, knee-jerk reaction in in a way it changed the team too 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 much clearly there is not a depth there that Bayern has and for instance I don't un understand uh, why an Edison Cavani didn't just sign on for a few more uh, months because they could have used an Ed Edison Cavani there was Icardi but Icardi also I think Chupo Moting was the right call there if you want to get but I have to say I did not like necessarily the substitutions by uh, Tuchel I like the substitution of Coutinho because now Coutinho is a Champions League winner and since he's a long player from Barcelona it also means that Barcelona have to now play another 5 million to Liverpool because he won the Champions League with Bayern I mean this tells you everything about what Barcelona has been doing wrong in the last few years now I've been talking a lot about PSG because I think most of the uh, forward action came from PSG but I have to say Bayern played it really really well and sound and all, a lot of credit also needs to go to Lewandowski who for once did not score that record is the one that Bayern missed but when they had the lead he nicely held up the ball and played for the team to be safe and bring that game over the line uh, Thiago in midfield kept it together wonderfully. I don't know why they, why they want get, to get, get rid of him. It's not like that he uh, plays accurate passes and all the other things. He's clearly a player that needs to be shoved away. No. I don't know. I think uh, Liverpool, if they really get him, they will get themselves uh, 
another great option and yeah i don't quite understand that uh, it also means that a bunch of bayern players have won the champions league twice and you kind of have to i mean on, honestly bayern they had already five they played in the 11th final there's the pedi pedigree there the psg was missing and psg uh very often uh, if you play in your first Champions League final, you don't win it. I think the last one to do was Dortmund in 97. So uh, that was a tall order. You thought that with all the experience that they have, especially uh, up front, that they might overcome that uh, curse. But I saw now whenever a team is on five Champions League trophies and they go in a final, they win the sixth one. It's uh, it's kind of amazing, I have to say. Uh, it's except for Real Madrid early on, they they lost they, they lost two, but Milan, they were five from '94. Then um, no, uh, my my analogy is break is breaking down right there. Sevilla, Liverpool, and Bayern. Okay, Milan uh, took two uh, took two final uh, no took one final loss and then they they got it. But you know, having five. It's easy to get to six to get from zero to one. That's all 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 I want to say, because most debutants just don't get there. Uh, I actually think that the seven, the, the the fifth triumph is the one that takes a little bit longer. Well, let's see. I might be wrong on that day. I'll have a little more analysis needs to be made. Clearly, no. Uh, Bayern now is on six titles, as is Liverpool, so in back-to-back uh, -back we get the six titles. They're one behind Milan, of course, Real Madrid is way ahead. Um, you have to think that both Liverpool and Bayern are among the favourites next season. I don't think that Liverpool will have another one of those, but who knows uh, how much they uh, change um, things around. I still don't know what Manchester City will do. For PSG, I think they had a great showing. Um, and I have a feeling it's not the last time that we see PSG in the final. Uh, however, it might be the last time, as I said already, for Thiago Silva, for Chupo Moting, we know already. Um, rumors are even for Thomas Tuchel. Because uh, Leonardo is on the way of replacing him maybe with uh, Allegri or someone like uh, Pochettino. I have to honestly say, Tuchel would deserve clearly another season. Um, he made this team, this team is gelling at the moment. I will not break it up, I actually would try to get a little bit more midfield presence. Um, and if you can get uh, either give Thiago Silva another year, um, or another two to two years, or get a good defender in. And I think PSG is a team to watch for the next few years. So uh, I th think they will be back and I think the next time they probably will do it better. Let's see who they will come up against. Uh, another nice thing that I want to add, it was so refreshing to see, to have, I mean, first, first, first of all, um, it was refreshing to see that there was no pre-match show. Really liked that. Uh, there were no kids who waving the flag, it was all done, whatever was lying there was all done um, virtually. The game, you have to, uh, I always had to pin, this is a Champions League final and you can hear everything. There, it's like, I mean, if it wasn't played in a big stadium, it could have been played on a uh, village ground and it would have sounded very similar. But then, to me, the greatest thing was that both um, reserve benches, uh, in the second half especially, started chants like fans. You had an atmosphere there. That was amazing, that everyone got in there. This is how it should, this is how it should be, in a way. Um, I also like that the trophy presentation was rather quick. You know, when, uh, yes, they have to engrave it, blah, blah, blah. But it went all tuck, 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 tuck. Not this long wait that we used to have. It was, I have to say, that was refreshing to see. Uh, final words on this final f eight tour tournament now many many like it I have to say I did enjoy it too to have this end of season tournament I'm just not sure if this is the solution that we want to have this now uh, maybe a final four I would go more for the one thing is you lose matches you lose two matches uh, 
or two match days, uh, which might not be bad for the players uh, to have a little bit, have it all more condensed. Um, but with those matches, you lose TV revenue. On the other hand, I think the marketing for this final eight could go through the roof. The problem is that you will also limit even more the places where to play this final uh, eight tournament. I mean, Lisbon was almost ideal because it's a city with two stadiums, uh, same like in Cologne. But now I think in Istanbul you could do it. Uh, but, you know, if it goes, for instance, we had a final in Kiev, where would you do it there? In Madrid, you could do it. You have uh, two stadiums, you know, uh, it limits a little bit the options. Has to be fairly, fairly safe. I'm curious how, how to get forward. I like the idea of having this uh, tournament in the sense that it has less games played and maybe you can even condense it. I think you need to think about condensing things down anyway a little bit more to you know get less games in, although you know that means usually less money. But I enjoyed at least this feeling of having a you know, we did not have the Euros. This gave me a little bit the feeling of having the Euros there. Uh, and you saw great games. We saw Berlin overtime. That was also rather uh, surprising to me. So yeah, those are final thoughts. I'm curious how to see how it will go forward. I, as much as I enjoyed it, I would hate a little bit to see it go away from the home and the away ties because it takes out the atmosphere, the fans a little bit. Imagine you're in a Champions League final, yes, you have the rival fans there, but there's also a lot of new owners and this will go all the way quarterfinals and so on. Um, I think you will get a different atmosphere. So for that reason, I'm not so sold on it. And there is something about two-legged ties uh, that go back and forth. <sighs> yeah. But I'm open for anything. Again, congratulations, Bayern. Uh, you finished a perfect season, first one ever, uh, a great run, and this probably was, despite me being for Paris, I fully recognize that this was probably the most deserved Champions League victory of all time. When I look at the entire season, winning all games, even if there's two games less played, is an amazing feat. Tip of the hat. Congratulations, FC Bayern München. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about the final. Um, in general, how do you think about the Final Four tour tournament? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.